the city of El Paso is a bridge spanning the Rio Grande River, part of the geographical boundary between the United States and Mexico. A customs officer at the border checks people and cars as they leave one country and enter the other. If we were entering Mexico, we'd find much to see and learn. We might begin our trip by looking at a map of Mexico. We see first a land of many mountains. A great range runs along Mexico on the west. A smaller range is on the east. The mountains are only one of the many kinds of regions in Mexico. Generally speaking, there are three main regions. The northern plateau with scattered mountains, the high volcanic mountainous central plateau, and the coastal lowlands. Many of Mexico's important cities are located on the northern plateau. On the road to Chihuahua, about 100 miles south of the border, we'll find parts of the northern plateau that look like this. In many ways, the region resembles the southwestern United States. These are Mexican vaqueros, or cowboys. What can we learn about the climate and activities by looking about us? We see scattered vegetation, which grows here even though skies are clear and there is little rain in this part of Mexico. Yet this land and climate are suitable for raising cattle. Cattle ranching is an important activity in this part of the northern plateau. The vaqueros drive the cattle to rail sidings, where they are shipped to the large cities of northern Mexico, such as Torreon, one of the centers of Mexico's growing meatpacking industry. Torreon lies southeast of Chihuahua. Besides being a meatpacking center, Torreon is also a city of other industries. Here, wheat is milled into flour, and cotton is woven into textiles. In addition to its industries, Torreon is an agricultural community. The city is built in the midst of desert lands, but outside it are tilled fields on which farmers produce alfalfa, as well as cotton, wheat, and corn. A special kind of farming has created fertile fields in the midst of the desert around Torreon. You may have seen this kind of farming in other dry places. It's called irrigation farming. Yet we see that the fields near Torreon are right in the midst of a desert. Where is the source of water for irrigation? The skies are clear. There's very little rainfall here, as in most of northern Mexico. Remember, though, we discovered that Mexico is a land of mountains. Could some mountains be a source of water? Yes. Streams formed from the summer rains high in the mountains west of Torreon provide much of the water used to irrigate the fields we saw. Irrigation has made Torreon one of the richest agricultural communities of northern Mexico. Another large North Mexican community is the city of Monterrey. Monterrey, about 200 miles east of Torreon, is the largest city of the northern plateau. Most of the people of industrial Monterrey work in large mills and factories. Monterrey is often called the Pittsburgh of Mexico. It is the chief city of Mexico's steel industry. There are other important industries in this city. This is a factory where shortening is made from vegetable fats. Quite different from the modern manufacturing city of Monterrey is the old town of Zacatecas, also located in northern Mexico. The town was once one of the great mining centers of the world. This historic mine has been producing silver since Spanish colonial times. Today, modern mines in the states of Chihuahua and Zacatecas produce much of Mexico's metallic wealth, and many men are employed in this industry. Mexico produces metal ores such as lead, zinc, copper, and gold, and is the world's chief producer of this ore, silver. In Spanish colonial times, silver and gold bars were taken from Zacatecas to Mexico City across the high central plateau. Let's look at this volcanic mountainous plateau region of central Mexico. Rich in farmlands and dotted with many villages, 
This part of the central plateau is sometimes called the heart of Mexico. Corn is grown by most of the farmers on the central plateau and is the principal food of the Mexican people. Because corn is eaten at almost every meal, its cultivation is an important part of farming in Mexico. This farmer, Fernando Lopez, is plowing the land to plant his crop of corn. Farming in Mexico, as in most other lands, is hard work. The home of Senor Lopez and his family is a small house built of adobe bricks and roofed with clay tiles. Inside, its one main room contains little furniture. Senora Lopez is grinding corn for the noon meal. She shapes the moist cornmeal into thin, flat pancakes called tortillas, which her daughter Maria cooks on a griddle. The Lopez family is among the many farm families living on the central plateau of Mexico. The central plateau near Mexico City is often seen by visitors from the top of a famous landmark, the Pyramid of the Sun. This pyramid, built centuries ago by an Indian tribe, stands on the site of their ancient religious center. Today, the center of Mexican culture and government is Mexico City. It is also the main business and industrial city of Mexico. Many of its people work in large office buildings of the Mexican federal government, while thousands of others work in the busy industries of the city. Mexico City is the chief manufacturing community of the country. Its industries include the manufacture of machine parts and various kinds of metal goods, the making of glass, and many other products for Mexico's growing markets. Yet, along with modern industries, there are hand industries that are centuries old, the making of pottery, jewelry and other products of Mexican silver, and fine lacquer ware. These crafts are important industries in many cities and villages of central and southern Mexico. Now let's look at the third region of Mexico, the lowlands. On the eastern coast, near Veracruz, for instance, we'll see this trees and crops that look quite different from those in the other regions we've seen. Sugar cane is among the crops growing in the warm, moist lowlands. But this industry is the most important activity of the lowlands. Do you know what it is? Yes, producing and refining oil is the chief industry in this lowlands region. It is one of the ways the people of Mexico earn their living. Can you remember others? In the north, cattle ranching. Working in the businesses and industries of the large cities. And finally, in the lowlands, producing oil. We have learned some important things about the people of Mexico and the work they do. But there is much more to learn about this country. You might begin by finding answers to such questions as these. What other crops are grown in Mexico? How is Mexico improving education? What about Mexico's long history and its influence? How is modern living changing Mexico? We have only begun to study Mexico, one of the most interesting and colorful countries of the Americas.